Yes, folks, it's Thursday, 4 p.m. Central Time. If that's true, then I must be Fred McMurray, and this must be... All right, folks, I'm Fred McMurray. As I said, this is Pillars of Franchising. I'm with my co-host, Ray Pillar and Rebecca Monet. Ray and Rebecca, how are we doing today? And who's introducing our guest once we get done with Pillars of Weather? <laughs> of course we have to do Pillars of Weather. Well, I'm doing great. I am sitting here in Big Cabin, Oklahoma, on vacation, on my way to Sedona. Uh, in there, Where is that, Arizona? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm sitting here in the middle of a cow pasture somewhere <laughs> in my RV. <laughs> no coronavirus then. Rebecca, where are you? Oh, beautiful San Diego, of course. Um, although it is raining today, pouring buckets, something, of course, that we love in Southern uh, California as long as you're not out on the freeway, at which point you got some crazy, crazy California drivers uh, hydroplaning this direction and that. But it's a fabulous day when it rains. All right. So oh, yeah. since we went first, yes, Ray? No, nothing, nothing. Okay. Nothing. I was going to say since, <laughs> since Ray went first on where he's at and where the weather is, um, why don't you introduce our guest today? All right. I'd be happy to. And I'd like to welcome to the show the Chief Operating Officer of Made Pro, Fly Fo, and Men in Kilts. Well, you got to be careful how you say that. Hey, welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate it and really happy to be here with you guys. Have you. All right. So since everyone else went quiet, um, all right, Made Pro, yeah. I think I understand that. Flyfo, not quite sure, but men in kilts. Please tell us <laughs> about men in kilts. Yeah. I've been getting questions asked since. So, so for our viewers, Christopher was supposed to be on back in February 6th. And for anybody who's watching the show knows we didn't have a show that day because uh, Charter Spectrum in Shell Beach decided to reroute internet to the new high fangled cable and took everybody in Shell Beach out. So Christopher wasn't there. So <laughs> tell it. people have been asking me since then, men in kilts, men in kilts. It's like, so tell us about men in kilts. Okay. Yeah, I know that's the sexy brand, right? I mean, it is, to be honest, I say it to our marketing team all the time, I'm like what a gift that we got bestowed. But I think there's a, a, a really big story that even goes beyond that. You know, in the fact that, you know, the founders of Maypro, which is our original founding franchise company, um, were actually partners with me in founding a software company back in the late 90s because they wanted to get a piece of software together to start franchising Maypro. And due to that, we were a field service company that sold software to plumbers, electricians, window cleaners maid services, carpet cleaners, pest control companies, basically anybody in a van uh, that came to your house that serviced somebody um, and really, you know, formed a lot of relationships and, and became very popular. And one of the things we realized by doing that is that most of field service is pretty much the same. It's getting the right person to the right place at the right time, the right information to get the job done right and to get paid for. I mean, and, you know, we were very successful. We wound up selling that company. Five years ago when I joined Maypro, one of the things that, you know, was the, the big initiative was to scale Maypro to grow more organization, but also to start adding on additional field services businesses, which gets us to the men and kilt story that you were asking about. <laughs> well, Thank you for the history. So our, our audience loved it. Um, yeah. Go with the sexy brand. One of our customers, very early customers at Service CEO, was a gentleman named Chris Carrier, who had a big window cleaning business up in Calgary, in Canada. 
and you know he wanted to grow his business so he joined with us and he really did i mean he he killed it as far as the window cleaning company in terms of yearly revenue like most window cleaners are about five hundred thousand to a million dollars he with our help with the software went up to two and a half three four million dollars and we saw him grow over the course of the years that we were with him and being the true entrepreneur that he is at about 2000, I think it was about 2010, 2011, he started getting stuck at like that $4 million a year business and became the first franchisee of Men and Kilts, which was a Canadian franchisor um, from 1-800-GOT-JUNK, was part of that, uh, you know, family. It was a couple of people that decided to take this, this great brand that we all know is sexy as hell and decided to, to run with it a little bit. And within a few years, he actually became the CEO of it. And because of our relationship for the last 15 to 18 years, um, you know, I got very interested and our company got very, very interested in it and uh, utilized our relationship. And we've taken over the inquired the American rights to that brand. Uh, we literally, this is like months old. We uh, acquired in April, right at the beginning of a busy season last year, which meant, okay, let's try to support our couple American franchisees. So uh, the 14 franchisees that are up in Canada are still under the Canadian uh, belt, if you will. And here we are ready to start the next busy season and just started selling franchises uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, have them ready now. Our software is ready for them to use us as opposed to the previous. Uh, we've done all the marketing. We've done all of the uh, rebranding, if you will, put up our website, put up the franchising website. It's amazing. Like we all just take for granted, I think, when you're an established franchisee, how much it takes to get a franchise brand off the ground. Oh, my. Uh, really, really, really proud of my team. Uh, you know, we've done it for two brands now in less than two years, which is wow. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I like your background in technology. I actually did a little research on you uh, simply because you're running three companies and that always fascinates me as a scientist, a behavioral scientist, is how does a person juggle three things like that? And I saw your strong technology uh, background. So how much of that background has helped you then systematize, replicate, scale uh, three business at the same time. In particular, we're talking about uh, men in kills, but how much, how important is the technology side to these businesses? Yeah, and I don't think that can be misrepresented in any way, to be honest. You know, it's one of the things, you know, my VP of technology um, and actually bringing her into taking over operations for me right now um, so I can concentrate on the multiple brands and, and bring more into the umbrella. All roads lead to tech. Like, so yeah. we're a company, we're a service company. You can even say we're a cleaning company, right? But the reality is no, we're a technology company and everything, all of our answers come down to some piece of technology. So one of the things that is amazing you know, so I had 70 franchises that were customers of ours and used our software, you know, many in the same industries, you know, some of our competitors, if you will, I don't consider a competition because there's enough business for everybody, but there are other made services that use our software, some still do. There are other pest control companies that still use our software. There are other window cleaning companies, thousands of them that still use our software. Um, we got to reinvent and build our software from scratch that we utilize now. And it's only available for our franchise. We have not, you know, gone out and sold that to the public. So that is one of our secret clauses. But that's just software, right? That's the day to day. That's an ERP mm -hmm. that runs the business as far as the call comes in, the web lead comes in, and how you manage it from, you know, like we said, quoting them, selling them get and make sure the right person's there at the right time and, and they get paid. That's for the franchisees, but for us as a business, we utilize the same software. We're all in one ecosystem. And in general, any challenge 
these days that gets presented to a company and ours in particular and it is one of the benefits but also the difficulties is it's usually a technology answer right yeah so very very lucky that you know i've got a team of 11 people in my software engineering department because everything in our company goes through it. And, you know, think about that for just a second and the benefits to the men and kilts franchise franchisees, the business owner, this kind of proprietary software way to manage a business. Like you said, everything from the lead all the way to scheduling people and doing whatever else you're doing with that software, the average window cleaner, the average guy that's out cleaning gutters, the average person that's considering creating a maid service, they can't build this kind of technology, it's, it's impossible. That's not what their core skills are. And yet here we are at Men and Kills providing that to our franchisees so they can leverage these years of experience and, and the hours put into developing this, this system. Because uh, it, it, it's true, it kind of all boils down to technology, but not everyone is um, strong in technology. So here I can come in as a franchisee and all I have to do is embrace and learn some basics about that technology and I'm running a business as, as a men and kilts uh, franchisee. It's very exciting to me. Yeah, and, and, and one of the things I always say to you know anybody that comes in for a franchise store, right? We have discovery days or everybody calls it something a little bit different, but it is you know, the opportunity to offer somebody a different life. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really how I feel, you know, uh, the opportunity to be a franchise warrior. You have the opportunity to change people's lives. It's a pretty amazing um, power. Your, your wife's calling. She said, stop by and get some chocolates, right? <laughs> no, actually, um, I'll jump in there. Um, someone asked, this is a message coming in from uh, West Bloomfield. So New Jersey would be my guess. New Jersey. Okay. So uh, somebody asked, how many franchisees of each concept are there? Um, okay. That's a good question. Yeah, no, so, uh, and sorry for the ring ring. That just lets you know people are listening. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, Maypro is obviously the mature business that has been you know here for a couple of decades right now, and uh, there's over 300 locations. Uh, but obviously we have people that have multiple locations. So, this, but I think last count. Last week, about 189 owners, somewhere in that range. Um, with Men in Kilts, like it's something that we acquired the American rights to and adopted uh, two uh, franchises from that that were not in Canada, in the United States. And uh, currently we're at five. We just started selling franchises three weeks ago. Um, and with FIFO, we have six franchises. But that also is a year and a half old. We just started that one as well. So, have, so I have, heard you had over 300 franchises. Three, between all three, there's over 300 franchises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With between all three, we have almost 400 locations. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I, I think we think the need, we may need to bring our audience down to a ground level here. So not many of uh, our people in the audience might know what is Men and Kilts. I think we've hinted about it, but, you know, FlyFo, uh, Maypro is kind of obvious. It's probably a cleaning company. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's why I like those kind of names. Uh, FlyFo, I assume, then is a... So, yeah, FlyFo is a mosquito and tick control company. So. Okay. We, we eradicate mosquitoes and tick control in somebody's backyard and their uh, surrounding areas. Okay. And then men in kilts, not so evident by the name. Um, yeah. There's a window cleaning company. We are, it, I would call it exterior home services. So window cleaning, gutter cleaning for the areas that have gutters, pressure washing, 
uh, and house washing or oh, house okay. home. So those are the big ones. But exterior home services is kind of uh, the way that they put it. So do and, they wear, do they wear yeah. kilts? That's the question. They wear kilts. And uh, it's kind of humorous because, as I said, we just started selling franchises a few weeks ago. And we had uh, training on site last week um, in Phoenix, which is one of our first new franchisees uh, since we acquired them. And people are pulling over and taking pictures with these guys while they're training. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It really is. I mean, it's... uh, they're up on ladders cleaning windows, you know, in those two story houses or whatever. I have a, a good friend, and his name is Steve. And occasionally on certain events, he shows up in a kilt. And everybody always asks him the same question What do you have under that? And he never answers. So I'm going to ask you what do the guys up on ladders have under the kilt? Because that's what our studio audience is thinking right now. <laughs> So one of our uh, slogans is no peeking. <laughs> I can't really tell you, but hopefully they have something under there, just in case you aren't a rule follower and really do peek. <laughs> a gust of wind, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yet people always accuse me of taking it in other places. And it's West Bloomfield, Michigan, by the way, I was uh, pointed out by our listener. And uh, they asked for confirmation on the number of fly foes. I said, told them six, if I heard you right, or was yeah, it fly foe franchisees at the current time? Okay. Michigan wants to know, do you have any in Michigan? Because there are lots of mosquitoes in Michigan. There are a lot of mosquitoes everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So at the current time, I don't think we have one in Michigan. I'd have to, Double check, but I'm 98% sure we do not have one in Michigan. Yeah, I, there are. Yeah, there's no mosquitoes yet in Michigan because it's still icy there. <sighs> I love it when our listeners are engaged. <laughs> Go ahead, Rebecca. <laughs> well, it's interesting. One of the things about all three of these businesses that I find fascinating, I wonder if you could address a little bit and how important it is, is this idea of um, flexibility, meaning you got uh, folks that don't have to work weekends, they don't have to work uh, nights, Um, they're able to do kind of a nine to five. Is that a big selling point or will some of your franchisees say, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll, you know, my business can also be grown over the weekend. Yeah. So now we're getting into what's in it for for people who join us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I I don't want to, I don't take that lightly. Like, as I said earlier, like, it's one of the the things that makes me so happy for what I do. Like, I really have the capability to, you know, for people who are willing to take a risk, because we all know starting a business and opening up a franchise of any kind is a risk. Um, and put some hard work and sweat equity, as I call it, into it right. to hopefully achieve what they're looking to achieve. And everybody's, what they're looking to achieve is different. And it's one of the questions I ask every potential franchisee, like, okay, what do you want? Because I got to make sure I can look them in the eye and say, you know what? I can do that. And if I can't, then I need to be able to say, you know what? I can't. You got to find somebody else that can do that. Because that's the most as a franchisor as we all know is is it the right fit the right relationship of who you are as a brand as a culture as a company as everything because literally these people are jumping out of an airplane and hoping you're the parachute right so you know i i we we do take that very very seriously now one of the great things about field service is yes you're right no perishables, right? Fixed right. costs are pretty fixed. Your variable costs are, you know, and I hate to say it with what's going on in the world right now, but it is a benefit. Like if there's no jobs and no revenue coming in, your costs are down, right? 
payroll and marketing are your biggest costs as a field service business, unless you're in to heavy construction or things yeah. mm-hmm. you need to buy. But even at that point, most of those businesses are smart enough to know I only buy it once I've been committed to and have a deposit. And that's why like HVAC companies and construction companies, you're paying before they ever show up, right? Mm-hmm. But it's a benefit of field service over restaurants and other things that are nights and weekends, right? And also heavy on inventory and perishables. No, field service is, you know, got that benefit of, you know, many, many of our owners. And, you know, as a franchise or, of course, we want everybody to have $5 million a year business, right? But the reality is there are many people who buy our franchise that want to get a certain level to replace what their corporate check is. Right. But the benefit of working a couple hours a day, you know? And it's why for us in the field service business, you know, uh, we have so many successful women as owners because they get to be moms and go right. and to school at one o'clock in the afternoon and go to the Little League game and all of that, but yield, yet still provide enough income to the family to live the lifestyle that they're looking for. So, yeah, I think that's a huge benefit, Rebecca. Oh, that's, yeah, I I absolutely have been in the franchise space 27 years and your whole uh, point of right fit is so, so important. And, and this attribute of flexibility in a franchise system that I can have it big, I can have it small, I can work part-time, I can work full-time, I can, I can, I can do it in my spare, I can, whatever is huge. And it opens the door to a lot of uh, individuals that otherwise wouldn't be able to buy a franchise. And, and you gave a great example of maybe a, a mom whose children are small and she's choosing to spend her balance her life a little bit. Right. And so she can grow it over time as the children grow as a, as an example. So it, this is a big thing. And I think in, in our society today, it's becoming more and more important. Look at Ray. I mean, he's running a business in an RV, hanging out with his girlfriend, crossing the country. That's flexibility. That's being in control of your life and to have an opportunity with men in kilts and um, to have that kind of flexibility. That's just massive, massive. And I think that's one of the things. I'll I'll talk to that as soon as Fred goes to a commercial. (laughs) (laughs) He needs to pay the bills. <laughs> okay. And not only that, but as you may have heard, we've been getting lots of questions in. So first, we'll thank the Link Local Network and let everyone know that they can uh, dial in at uh, 323-580-5755 or continue to chat at pillarsoffranchising.com or the Link Local Network. Uh, Link Local Network is our broadcast network. Great article on how to keep your family healthy and keep the coronas, coronavirus, coronavirus, I'm so over it, um, away. Um, <laughs> canceling everything. So sad. But here's a word from one of our sponsors. Hey, hey franchise, franchise owners. owners. How is your, your local, local marketing? marketing? Do, you Do you feel, feel like, like you could, could use some help keeping up with your social media posts and comments and reviews? Do you wonder if you could be doing more to attract local customers? Are you able to identify new movements to your local area? At Westvine, we help franchisees like you reach more local customers through digital marketing. With daily monitoring, creative content, ad placement, and customer data intelligence, we'll get your business in front of the people who want your products or services. We also work with franchisors who need an agency to handle the digital marketing for all of their locations. If you're ready to reach more local customers, give us a call at 805-265-5440 or visit us at westvine.com. That's 805-265-5440 or westvine with a Y.com. The The Franchise Franchise Woman is a bi-monthly digital magazine that empowers women as they navigate the franchising industry by providing relevant news, tools, advice, and inspiration. We are a resource for women who are seeking to own their own businesses, improve their existing businesses, find creative solutions, and take advantage of franchise opportunities. 
We feature women in the business who best exemplify our ideals and have something to teach our readers. In addition to our exclusive articles relating to the female entrepreneur, we also feature brands that are geared for women. Women have become the fastest growing sector in business ownership and have become a powerful, influenceable force fueling the economy. The Franchise Woman will give you the news that is relevant to you to help you navigate the path of successful franchise ownership. By women, for women, and about women. We are The Franchise Woman. Join us today at www.thefranchisewoman.com. And we're back. Um, interestingly enough, on the, the day of the great internet outage, um, Elizabeth was supposed to be the co-host. <laughs> Um, in a really quirk, quirky set of fight, um, Rebecca, uh, Elizabeth ended up replacing Be Rebecca on a couple of them because Rebecca decided to go. Yeah, I, I fell and I broke my femur six weeks ago. So, oh. hey, I introduced you to Elizabeth. I trust that woman. She's, she's, she's going to move and shake. Uh, and I'm so glad you actually addressed some of that, Christopher, a little bit earlier. Uh, women are up and coming in the franchise space. And it sounds like each of these businesses that you represent are women friendly and flexible to accommodate some of the um, multitasking that the average <laughs> woman. Uh, it also, um, I can see a young college person who could grow their business while they're getting their university degree, uh, running a men in kilts or another one of your businesses. Uh, I'd actually, that's something else that's very near and dear to my heart. So I'm the father of two incredibly strong women and seven out of our 10 uh, highest revenue producer in Maypro are women. Two of the men kilts that we uh, acquired are incredibly strong women. Uh, so business ownership is not gender specific. No, it's not. It, it is talent, uh, perseverance, hard work. And the reality is of running any business. Are you somebody that somebody wants to work for? Right are people willing to show up every day and know that you have their back and are running a business and that is not gender specific. So, you know, no, we have a, a vast amount of incredibly strong women in our organization. And I'm proud to say that as the father of two daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ray, We're back from the commercial jump. <laughs> <laughs> and in this day and age, uh, when it's difficult to find employees, good employees that want to stay with you, it, it, you have to be kind and gentle and you have to be likable. And, and that's the only way you're going to keep your employees. And uh, I don't know if gender has a, a corner on, on that market, either, either gender, but it brings to mind, it says men in kilts. So do we have women in kilts too? So, yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> you're you're asking tough questions today, right? <laughs> I like working with you. <laughs> and if you go on the website, I think probably most of the pictures are actually women in kilts because mm -hmm. um, you know, at least on the franchise site. But you know, yeah, and in order to get by this is a complete side note, but in order for one of our new franchisees that wants to um, and join us to get their SBA loan. We actually had to put on 14 point font everywhere that we are not. <laughs> <laughs> A disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, disclaimer. Uh, Anybody that can do the job well and enjoys wearing a kilt and likes people, we're good with. Yeah, so I love it. The only problem I have, I got to tell you, this is personal. I am of Scottish descent. I'm a, I'm a Morrison from the Morrison clan. And so I think I have some right to the kilt as a, as a Scot. And I have a little trouble that this was founded in Canada. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to... 
<laughs> so you're going to have to defend yourself here a bit, you know. <laughs> I will, actually. So Nick Brand, who was the original founder, if you will, and he was an independent, um, and he is Scottish. Of oh, Scottish. okay. There. Okay. All right. He is of Scottish descent. Um, he was the one that originally started this. And then, as I mentioned earlier before, he wound up, um, you know, interacting with some folks from 1-800-GOT-JUNK uh, that decided, like, just like we all do, you you don't forget the name once you hear it. I mean, right. it, marketer, it is the dream, right? It is, it resonates. So once you know it, it never leaves, right? So okay. people from 1-800-GOT-JUNK, they were the same thing. Like, oh, my God, here's this guy who just came in my house. What a great brand. What's our franchise? It because I know. Something. Okay, wait, I got to stop you. You said 1 800. I swear you said 1 800 got drunk. No. D R U N K. <laughs> Isn't that what he said, or is it just my no. hearing, guys? Well, if it is. It's, and it's how a, does that go with kilts? Drunk and kilts. I want to know how the two kind of all go together. That might be a very successful business, though. Uh, hey, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an idea person, Christopher. <laughs> Merge it with Uber. So you don't have to uh, well, you're going to have to change that in this new age. It's going to be have to. It's going to have to be one eight hundred get stones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. You know what? Um, you, you seem like a happy guy. And one of the things uh, when I was doing a little research on men in kilts is part of your culture is not just um, built on flexibility and your business model is built on flexibility, but the word friendlier kept coming up or friendly is, is, is tell me more about that. What the, that, does that mean to the men in kilts brand? Yeah. And, and I think it's brand nonspecific to be honest. I think it's just who we are as people. Right. As a franchisor, you know, and one of the people we do not have on our team, our executive team, maybe to and sometimes bites us is we don't have a chief compliance officer. Right. And I really think that's what it is about being franchise friendly, franchise flexible, which I think is what you're relating to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and it really comes down to you know, us as a team just saying, being humans, like, okay, what are we, what are we doing here? Okay. Every situation is different. And to always look at it as a human being and be like, you know, we don't, we don't just take anybody as a franchise. We're, we're very picky and we have a whole selection process. And one of the things I'm really proud of my franchise development team, they know like tour day, means like they're signing off that these people are worth us spending eight hours, 10 hours with, you know, individually and really getting to dig deep into. And, our, you know, our founders, we spend hours even before they get there, but they know like they're putting their reputation on the line, that it isn't a possibility, a check. It is like, no, we see somebody who deserves to be part of our family. So, you know, once you have that kind of relationship established with somebody, yeah, just like everybody else, we have a 400 page legal document, right? You can't be a franchisor without having a 400 page legal document. That's, that's required, right? But the reality is, is that thing better just go into a drawer, be a file attachment in your CRM system and never be seen or referenced again. Right. Otherwise something is wrong with your relationship. So, you know, yeah, we, we have definitely uh, have a lot of instances where we've been flexible and said, okay, well, your market is a little different. Your situation's a little different and, you know, done some things that may not necessarily, uh, you know, be in the FDD, but we're just right, you know. And, and then that is included saving some people, you know, like you talk about Corona right now, right? That that's a situation. I mean, we had it a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Gulf of Florida got annihilated. Right. And we had a new franchisee 
in Panama City, where if we lived to the letter of the law, it would have been the wrong thing to do. I couldn't have gone home and sleep at night. Just put it that way. And he, they had to close and, and move on. But we're not going to say, oh, you owe us this, you owe us that. It would just be wrong to do. So I don't know if it's necessarily franchisee friendly as opposed to just being human. Yeah. Right. Right. I like that. And it's, there's a certain set of systems and processes and even rules by franchisee, franchisor we have to have, but to treat each person as a human being with unique circumstances, again, in this world is unusual. And Mm -hmm. um, it's actually somewhat unusual, as you pointed out, in franchising, uh, that it isn't we're not all cookie cutters. We're not all the same. We do have uniqueness to our marketplace and to who we are. And you um, allow for that, that humanness. Beautiful. And, so, and I will say my, my, you know, the founders of Maypro, who were my partners in that other company, it comes right from them. I mean, Mark and Richard are just incredible human beings. So, you know, it's easy when everything comes down from the top down. And, you know, you either fit or you don't. And we've had people that didn't fit. It's like, okay, well, it's time for you to go somewhere else. <laughs> Love you, but yeah. yeah. And, and, that's, and that's true. It, it needs to come from the top down. So from the franchise or the franchisee down to the people out in the field. And it, 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 it does roll down. It, it, there's no doubt about it. So true, Ray. So true. All right. So I'll jump in here. A 800 gotdrunkcom is available at least. <laughs> until- Christopher, you want a 50 50? No, I'm, no, I'm buying Come on. My- Come on. <laughs> it will be at least until the text message that's in queue. No, there's probably a dozen attorneys listening to this right now, locking it down, <laughs> trademarking it, patenting it copywriting it, whatever they do, right? Then they, then they can pay me for the domain. <laughs> it was 1-800-GOT-TRUMP. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, since uh, we we touched on that, that great cure uh, known to man of insomnia, the FDD, um, I'll ask what, um, what you, obviously, there's three franchisors, you're involved with now you've been with involved in them for years what are the top three items you recommend somebody read first to decide if a franchise is for them or bears more research deeper research i know you're supposed to read them all i have franchisees who quietly confess to me on pain of death that i if i ever tell that they never bothered to read their fdd and still bought the franchise um but what do you recommend they read first? Top three items. Oh, what a great question. Um, so I'm going to assume that the 10 things they should do before they even read an FTD have been done, right? Because the FTD is not where you should make your decision. It should be, is this the right fit? Is this what I want to do? Is this what I can afford financially? All of that is needs to come first. The mm-hmm. FTD is the sanity check if like okay what am i legally contracting myself to be responsible for now i'm going to assume you've already assumed everything that i'm going to have to pay because there that is what a franchisor does you make money by providing services and stuff that you can do not on your own right so one is it sane can i still make a margin right so there is the financials that you need to to run and as a franchisor it's horrible the fact that we can't really dig deep into them i i, I always call them the handcuffs right because that's what everybody wants to talk about is okay what does it mean money wise i love your brand i love this i love what you're selling me i love the fact that i could have this lifestyle whatever it is i mean as franchisors we all have a different you know kind of thing that we're offering but what does it really mean financially right 
we're not allowed to talk about any of that. So, you know, one of the things I really love about uh, what we do is we try, we cram as much financials as we can that pass that sniff test so that they can at least get that. And then all of our franchisees know when you get a validation call, talk about it. Right. You know, you're not all going to become millionaires. You're not all going to own an Island in Hawaii, but here's the reality. You know, here's what you can actually do if you work hard and put together a good business. Uh, which I think is really important. Kind of sucks that can't be in the FDD, but it, that's the rules we play with, right? Um, other than that, I mean, I think you get a little bit of a flavor of the franchisor by what they put in there. Yeah. And what, mm-hmm. You know, and and I don't know, as I've never gone and shopped to be a franchisee, so I don't know how many FDDs they're actually reading or if that becomes when they get to the point of like the rubber's hitting the road and I really love this company and I'm thinking about doing this, but I think now having to put three of them, having to put a few of them together, obviously doing research in the industry to make sure ours are appropriate. And like I said, having relationships with awards in the past, it you can tell a little bit also by what's not in there. Yes. Like, what are they not thinking about? And maybe they're not mature enough as a franchise organization to really have their bases covered, right? So it, it's about brand. It's about lifestyle. It's about monetary, you know, kind of uh, reward <laughs> happen. But you also want to make sure your franchise or knows what they're doing and is providing value beyond a brand name and some exclusive territory. I think those are really valid points. Uh, I kind of wanted to highlight the one point you made there about the maturity of a franchise or um, because two year brands are younger, more emerging uh, franchise systems and one's a much more established franchise system. And there are certain uh, types of uh, individuals that fit really well in early stage franchise systems. They like that opportunity that an early stage franchise system offers, but it does require a certain amount of transparency on the franchisor that says, we're merging, we're still a little dynamic, we have some things we're still kind of figuring out, Um, we don't have all the validation we would like because we have X number of franchisees versus 300 franchisees. So that kind of transparency says we're new and you have this grand floor opportunity I think it's important for franchisors to highlight that there are some great benefits of coming coming into an early stage franchise system if you're the right franchisee. Others need lots of structure and lots of systems and a bigger name and all of that kind of thing. But so I I really appreciate you pointing that out because I think it's a very important factor in selecting a business and reading that FDD. Yeah, and and it's kind of the weird thing because we've gotten to live both right Mm -hmm. Uh, and we you know some of our new franchisees if you will and our new brands are franchisees that have been with us in a in maypro right that you know we have some people come from the outside but it's also like hey we know we're gonna you know and that's we're completely open and transparent with them in the fact that like we're learning right you know, just like our software that we sold to 70 different field, you know, service businesses from plumbers to electricians, whatever, that is some of the same concept, to be honest, of why we think we're going to be vastly successful in all the field service businesses, because 90% of the business is the same. What you do when you get there is a little bit different, but the mechanics of running the businesses are very, very similar, Mm -hmm. right? But we know we're learning and we have to be open and honest. And to be honest, we do that with our ex- very mature business. Everything changes. You're never done, right? I mean, every day is its own challenge. And, you know, if we're just going to say, hey, we're, we did it. And now we just know. And it's <laughs> Well, that's not reality. No. You know, even an established industry like the maid service industry, 
changes every day. I mean, we have mobile apps now. We have new things. That, I mean, Google Local Services changed the game eight months ago as far as digital marketing is concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day the world is changing around you. So I don't care how mature you are. If you ever lose that, hey, we're a startup mentality, you're just you're great kidding. advice. That is great advice. We have to stay relevant. So as franchisors, we have to innovate and think outside the box, which means there's always going to be change. Mm -hmm. um, good points. Good points. Absolutely. And, and, and you're right about technology. It, it's, it's changed so much uh, since I started my business 16 years ago. It's, it's absolutely outstanding how we track every single employee we know exactly where they are in every moment of the day we know how long they spent there doing uh you know uh, what they do and that uh, information is carried forward to to the uh, client's next uh appointment and so that we know how long they will be there and you know it, it, and it's amazing i think customers are getting a little bit more picky too because uh we've been fired for being five minutes too early and we've been fired for being five minutes too late <laughs> you know, so it's becoming an issue with a lot of people these days. Um, but and another thing I wanted to uh, bring up is uh, before uh, Fred breaks for commercial again, <laughs> is that I don't want to give people the impression that it's that because you have a franchise, it's going to be easy. It's yeah. hard. It's very hard in the beginning. You're going to work your butt off, and. You will reap the rewards, but it's going to take some time. Well, Ray, after we pay the bills, I, I really want to talk about that because I think that is so important for anybody to understand. Yep. And with that, we we'll thank our listeners. They can uh, continue to chat at us, and we have more questions coming in um, from the website. You can call in 323-580-5755. That's 323-580-5755. And now a word from another sponsor. Ever wonder how successful business people get educated about franchise business options? The Franchise Consulting Company is a group of over 100 franchise professionals with more than 2,000 years of franchise experience. We help our clients select and investigate franchise companies. And like a realtor, our services are free of charge to you. Our fees are paid by the seller. Reach out to us to learn more and get a free copy of the Franchise MBA, the number one bestseller and highest reviewed book on Amazon in the franchise category. Our website is thefranchiseconsultingcompany.com or feel free to call us on 800-321-6072. Are you thinking about opening a business? Whether you're in transition from a corporate job, looking to generate investment income, add to your existing business, or just too young to retire, come to the Great American Franchise Expo and explore your options. Meet face-to-face -face with dozens of franchise executives representing dozens of quality brands. A wide range of price points and ownership models are available. Attend our free seminars on accounting, real estate, and marketing. Franchise law experts will be there to answer your questions and banks are on hand to discuss loans and financing. The first 100 attendees will receive free VR goggles. For free tickets, visit www.franexpousa.com. The Great American Franchise Expo, coming to a city near you. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Abel. Uh, next one is this weekend, I think, or next week in Tampa. Don't have my glasses on. So check out the or FranExpoUSA.com. Um, sorry, folks, not wearing the glasses. Um, you were going to say something to Ray, Christopher, and then after you finish that, I'm going to, I got a couple of questions on initial investment or Ray's rules on what you need to buy a franchise. Yeah, so Ray, I want to just hopefully uh, encapsulate what you just said in a, in a hopefully a, a way that is simple to understand but it really is kind of the what do i got to do and what's in it for me right, right. And i don't think there's any franchise award out there in the world that sells the magic beans mm -hmm. right like i pay you this i become an instant millionaire that, that mm -hmm. as far as i know you know nobody's selling that yet because they'd probably be the most popular uh, franchise award in the world 
um, you know, that regardless of who you are, you're going to put in some time, effort, energy, and sacrifice mm -hmm. um, to make it happen. And, and it's one of the things I say to every one of our potential franchisees, and I do understand it because when we started our software company many, many moons ago, we were four years too early, right? Mm -hmm. we really were. And it was good because we got about four years of development in before the market was ready, but we were trying to sell to companies that didn't even have computers, right? <laughs> That's kind of hard. <laughs> in nice to Eskimos. In 1998, 2000, they didn't have computers yet. Thankfully, mm -hmm. QuickBooks came along. That was kind of the magic moment for us, if you will. QuickBooks came along and everybody was like, oh, I got to keep my accountant happy. Yeah. I got to get my team together. And they bought a computer for QuickBooks. And then mm -hmm. we discovered like, wait, this doesn't run my business. This is just for my account. <laughs> and that has been to all the field service companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember I worked a second job for four years. I mean, mm -hmm. my company couldn't pay me. I, mm -hmm. you know, I got health insurance and I had two young kids at the time and I didn't see them for five years. I worked as a mm -hmm. chef on weekends to sacrifice. And luckily I had a, a wife that was extremely supportive and knew like, okay, this is worth the investment that he's doing for us as a family. All her friends were kind of giving her crap, like tell him to get a real job. You know, why? why <laughs> you this like, is yeah. So if, if, if the show was, it was a lot longer, we could all tell our story about how we sacrificed, but. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Success. The overnight success is the five years or 10 years or three days, whatever it was before that you never see. And as long as the potential franchisee understands that, like, hey, I'm going to have to really, one, make sure I'm well planned, right? And I always use the use is there enough gas in the tank to drive where you need to get to? And that's money, right? Yeah. You're going yeah. to need money not only for the business, but mm -hmm. are my kids fed? Is my mortgage paid? all these other things that, you know, need to occur because you're not getting a paycheck anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You are running a business. You're starting a business. Right. So you need to make sure you're well-planned to make sure there's enough gas in the tank. But guess what? If it's a 28-hour drive, you got to stay awake for 28 hours and not everybody can do that, right? Yeah. He's yeah. got perfectly. Like most entrepreneurs are insane because sane people <laughs> would be We are against the wall right yeah. and yeah franchising gives you the capability to say here's 90 percent of it is here now you just have to add the sweat but you have to sweat mm -hmm. yeah, you know you know yeah mm -hmm. i thought you were gonna say you had a night job as a bass player in a band <laughs> when i'm looking at all your guitars in the back but Sounds like you had a real job. Yeah. <laughs> I was a chef. I, I, I cooked food and I loved it, actually. It was like going to war every night, you know, so. <laughs> Any job in a restaurant is like going to war. Oh, That's why oh I stay away from the food industry, you know. My my dad was in it. and No, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, That's I know business. countries that uh, make everybody, you know, join the military for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I honestly, the best thing that we could do as a country is make everybody, instead of going to college for their first year or two, either have to work in the food industry or sales. Yeah. Yeah. You know about people. You learn so much about people and working together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. With that in mind, it's now time to, yes, go down the rabbit hole. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You got, you got, huh? uh, Questions? No, we're we're, we're down the rabbit hole. Down rabbit the rabbit hole. You can't. See. <laughs> Our watchers are actually seeing the graphic of the four of us falling down the rabbit hole, as well as the fact that if they have their own questions, um, uh, if they have their own questions that they want to have submitted for a down the rabbit hole question, that they should fill out the form on pillars of franchising. So now people can see you protest this, um, you know. <laughs> We didn't get to their question. So the question is, how will 
men in kilts, got to pick on men in kilts. How will men in kilts defeat the ultimate um, uh, extraterrestrial invasion that's coming through Area 51? See, I finally got Area 51 in there. So um, <laughs> just substituted zombies instead of aliens. So how will men in kilts stop the alien invasion coming from Area 51? Well, you know you have Navy SEALs or ninjas if they're willing to wear a kilt to go to work, right? It takes <laughs> oh, you can True. To do, right? Not everybody is going to sign up to be a window cleaner or pressure washer in a kilt. So right away, we've already identified the proper human beings to go and do a killer job. So I'll take our uh, chances against any alien that you can throw at us or any zombie too. Mm -hmm. zombies and kilts another domain I, I have to look up <laughs> I believe it's probably okay. <laughs> hey you never know what sells who knew coronavirus would kill a third of the um, business of corona so Rebecca you get to take your last question here um, for me, it's a personal question. Um, you alluded to uh, the, the two men that founded this company and them being good people. Um, what do you mean by good people? Does that include ethical principle? What does that mean? Because in, in today's society, we're throwing these big words out, bad, good, and, and it the, those areas are now very gray, but you were very adamant about these two men and, uh, and with your help um, are creating this wonderful leadership that is trickling down to the rest of the organization, all three of these organizations. So talk to me about that. Okay. So before I can answer that, I need to understand what kind of time box I have. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> right. well, we get to ask Ray's last question, and we like to finish with Ray's last question. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes, that helps. So, one, I'm a big believer in any leadership team that's the sum of the parts, right? And, you know, making sure that all the pieces of the puzzle fit really well together. And I've been blessed to, to have these two men in my life as part of that leadership team, and we fill each other's pieces really well. So Mark, who, uh, Mark Kuczynski, who's the founder of Maypro, um, is just, he's brilliant. He really is. And he thinks on a whole different level uh, than many of us, you know, and, uh, you know, that is, he is what I would call the visionary. You know, mm -hmm. Richard Sparaccio, who's the other founder, I very much, you know, say, there's only been two people I've met in my life that when you look at them, you're like, Oh my God, you're, you're, you're not real. Like you are just really that nice. And you're like an angel on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Richard's one of them. my wife was the other. And to be honest, after four months and I, I could bring her down and she would confirm this. I actually said to her like, okay, when are you going to really be comfortable <laughs> enough about me to be you? Because nobody's this guy. Nobody's this good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What Richard is so um, when you have somebody really smart and somebody who really cares your business is destined to be successful and there is no uh, no joke of why Maypro and all these other brands and the next 10 that are coming behind it are not going to be successful because they're led by those two guys it's kind of that heart and the head combination I like it yeah Take it, so, Ray. All right. So no, normally I get a chance to ask, well, what does it take to get into one of, one of your offerings here? And, you know, as far as uh, you know, money is concerned and things like that. But since we don't have a time, any time for that, they're going to have to call you, Chris. And they're going to have to call you to get this information. <laughs> <laughs> and so how, how, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you or, or one of, you know, someone in your company that can give them all that information? Yeah, it's very easy. We've got three great websites that are out there. So Google, right? Like I say to my kids, they text me all the time asking me questions. I'm like, uh, you realize the same thing you just used to text me? 
has the answer, right? Google is the greatest answer. So if you look up May Pro franchise on Google, you look up FlyFo franchise on Google, and you look up Men and Kilts America on Google, you're going to get destined to meet one of the great people that work for our company. Fantastic. Well, it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show. And, and thank you, Rebecca, for being on the show. We, we, we really, uh, as a co-host, we really enjoyed it. I think it's been a fun, fun uh, session. What do you think, Fred? I think I had a good time. I thank our listeners for beeping all kinds of questions at us. And I think we'll be back next week because... Pillars, pillars, pillars of franchising.